data types lesson 5 go is strongly typed language this means that every variable we declare is bound to a specific data type and it will accept only values that match this type in go we have four categories of data types the basic types numbers string and booleans the aggregate types arrays and structs the reference types pointers slice maps functions and the last but not least interface types interface in this lesson i will focus only on the basic types let's start by exploring the numeric data types the keyword to define an integer type is int but go also provide the int 8 int 16 32 64 types which are ints with a size of 8 16 32 or 64 bits go also provide the data types uint and we can use this data type if we need to represent a value as an assigned number go also provide the uint 8 16 13 and 64 types let's take a look of this code i've declared two variables num1 and num2 num1 of type int 16 num2 of type int 32 the value of num1 is 1 2 3 and the value of num2 is 1 2 3 and 4 and then i'm printing in the console num1 plus num2 basically i'm doing the sum of num1 and num2 let's run the program go run main.go go you will throw an error saying invalid operation at the line 10 this line here invalid operation num1 plus num2 mismatch type in 16 and in 32 why we got this error we got this error because we are trying to perform a math operation between two different data types num1 of type int 16 and num2 of type int 32 and we got an error a cast is required we will need to cast explicitly the result of this math operation we will learn about the cast types end of this lesson you might heard about runes a rune is simply an alias for the int 32 data type is used to represent a unicode character let's test this code very simple i'm assigned the g to a variable run and then I'm, I'm printing this variable in the console let's see in let's run the project and see the output the output is not g as we might expect to see but 71 because 71 this number represents the unicode character of g i will talk about runes in the following lessons let me show you one thing let's create a new variable num1 of type int and let's put this value and then let's print in the console the value of the variable num1 let's run the project yes i got an error cannot use this value as int value in the variable declaration overflow i get an overflow error because i'm trying to assign this big value to an integer data type in the same way if i declare for example a variable u int an assigned number and if i try to put a negative number like 10 in the same way i will get an error cannot use minus 10 as a uint value in valuable declaration go provides data types for two sides of floating point numbers float 32 and float 64 we can use these types when we need to store large number they don't fit in any of the previously mentioned integer types the difference between these two types is the maximum size of bits they can hold 
If we look at the code, we can see that I declare two different variables, number one of type float32 and number two of type float64, and assign a big value, which is the maximum number that these two variables can hold. We can check it using the math package because it provides two constants, math.maxfloat32 and maxfloat64. Let's run it. And here we can see the limits of the float32 and float64. Floating point types are also useful when we need to use decimal numbers. For example, we could write something like this code, const1, const2, const3, there are three different constants, and I assign a decimal number. If you remember from the previous uh, lesson, Go will understand the data types of these three constants based on the value they assign. A Boolean data types has only two possible values, true and false. We declare a Boolean type by using the keyword bool. Remember that Go is different from other programming languages in the way that in Go you cannot implicitly convert a Boolean type to either 0 or 1. You have to do it explicitly. Take a look of the code. In this line, I declare a flag variable of type Boolean with the keyword bool and I assign the value true. The Boolean data types are important and we will talk about during the control flow statements. Finally, let's look at the most common data type in any programming language, string. In Go, the keyword string is used to represent a data type. To initialize a string variable, we need to define its value within double quotation mark. Symbol quotation mark are used for single characters. For example, the following code shows two ways to declare and initialize a string variables. In this code, I declare two variables, title and author, title of type string, and I assign the value a song of ice and fire. For author, instead, I use the colon sign and I assign the value George Martin. When you are using string, sometimes we need to escape characters. To do so in Go, we can use the backslash before the character. Let's check together with a simple example. Let's run the project, run, go run main.go. In the console, you can see the output formatting with the slash t, the quotation mark, and the new line. In Go, all data types have a default value when we don't initialize a variable. The default value of int is 0, the default value of the types boolean is false, and the default values of the string data types are an empty value. Inside the code, I declare different variables, but I haven't initialized it. So I'm printing all the value, in this case the default values, in the console. Let's check together. Go run main.go. And here we can see the default values of all that variable. Zero for int, false for boolean, and empty value for string. In the previous section, we tried to do a math operations between two variables of two different data types, int 16 and int 32. And if you remember, when we try to run the project, we got an error because we need explicitly do the casting. How we can do that? In this example, we need to cast the variable of type int16 to an int32. For doing that, we can use the function int32 and we can pass the variable num1 of type int16. In this case, before doing the math operation, we are explicitly casting the variable num1 and then we do the sum with the variable num2 of type in 32. In this case, we are doing the math operation between two variables of the same data type, in this case int 32. Let's run again the project to see that everything is working. Yes, in fact, right now it's working and we can do the math operation. Another approach for casting in Go is to use the strconv package. 
For example, to convert a string to an integer and vice versa, we can do it in this way. Let's take a look at the code. In this line, I'm casting a string value, in this case minus 10 as string, to an integer value. And I use the strconv.atoy function to do that. In the second line, instead, I'm converting a integer number minus 10 from an integer type to a string using the strconv package, but in this case, the itoa function. Let's run the project. And we can see in the console that we have the same number, minus 10, but the first one is an integer because we convert minus 10 as string to an integer, and the second value is a string because we converted an integer to a string. Sometimes we want to be able to write things on the screen and mix different data types doing so. For example, we might want to write a song of ice and fire has 200 pages. Let's say that this information is represented by two variables. As you can see, the title of type string, a song of ice and fire, and the variable pages with the value 200 of type integer. Here uh, we can print the example. I use the fmt package, the function printf, I put the message, so the book has pages and the list of variables that I want to be replaced in the right order to uh, print the book A Song of Ice and Fire has 200 pages. I need to use two presolder, the percentage %s that represent a string and the percentage %d that represent a number. By using this formatter as placeholder, the variables, title and pages, are correctly implemented and the output becomes the book A Song of Ice and Fire has 200 pages. Let's take a look, run it the project. Go run main.go. Perfect, we have our text in the console and we are mixing different data types, the title of type string and pages of type integer. And we've done this by using the printf function. Let's recap what you learned in this lesson. We learned the data type integer to represent numbers, the floating points number, the boolean, but that we are going to use it inside the flow control statement, the string, how to convert data types, and the string interpolation. Thank you for watching this video, subscribe to my channel to be always updated about new videos that I will upload and see you in the next lesson, bye!